All right, guys, Nuance Bro checking in. We're here in Walnut Creek, California. It's a walk against gun violence, and we are here to report on it. So let's go talk to some people. So what are we, what are we trying to achieve here today? We are trying to make people aware of what we can do to change our gun laws to make our country, our kids, safer when it comes to you know, gun violence. Right here. This little guy right here is why I'm here. Period. 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 And what specific policy proposals like do you think are we're, we're like what, what are we specifically advocating for? Because th this is in response to the the Vegas shooting, right? We we want to prevent future massacres like that because that's the deadliest uh, shooting in modern U.S. history. So how would we? try to stop something like that from happening in the future? I think we need to start with the basics. I mean, at this point, we can't even get funding to study gun violence in this country. So how are we going to make you know, realistic and effective legislative choices if we can't even study the problem? That's number one. Number two is, um, at this point, we don't even really track where guns are, who has guns. Uh, there's no, in fact, it's expressly prohibitive. There's no central computerized database you know, that law enforcement can go to when a gun is used in a crime. So at some point, just like we have cars that are registered, shouldn't we have guns that are registered? I mean, these things are made to kill. So it just seems to be common sense. And do you think these proposals would have stopped uh, the Las Vegas shooting? Um, I don't know what would stop the Las Vegas shooting. Well, obviously. Handguns are the majority of the, the, the violence and murders in this country. Uh, do you think we should have stricter controls or what should we do about handguns specifically? Um, yeah, again, that's a study, uh, that's a, something that should be studied. Oh, it's, it's been studied by multiple organizations, both pro and anti. I mean, have you, have you read any of them or do you support any specific proposals? Our emphasis is safety and just we support the Second Amendment, right? We support anybody that feels they need to own a gun for protection. People need to want guns for hunting. What about AR-15s, for example? Absolutely, absolutely not. Um, but some so, people would say that's their Second Amendment right, exactly. or they would but, say, they would um, say they, they use that for protection, and for yeah. example. Well, we, we're more concerned about our everyday safety. Why are we here today? We are we can walk too. fighting against, yeah, we can, yeah, we can walk. we're fighting against guns. <laughs> we're tired. We're tired of the NRA making all these decisions and the NRA funding all of our congressmen, and we want it to stop. So let's talk about specifics, because you know we can say we're against this or we're against that. Until we get down to specific policies, it's not going to achieve anything. So what kind of specific policies are we advocating for? Well, I'd like to see gun checks. I would like to see there be very... What do you mean gun checks exactly? Well, I mean, sorry, I'm not, I'm not prepared for this interview. I'd like to see background checks. I mean, there needs to be deep background checks on people before they can buy a gun. There needs to be a waiting period. People shouldn't be able to buy semi-automatic and automatic weapons. What are those used for besides killing? Well, I mean, semi-automatic semi weapons, that means one, one round per pull of the trigger. That's a standard, like, what, that's what cops carry on their belts. That's a, what most people decide to use for home defense. It's about 85% of the guns out there. Okay. You shouldn't be able to turn a, an, a semi-automatic gun into an automatic gun. There's no reason for that. There, I don't understand that beyond trying to kill a bunch of people. Sure, but, people are going to do illegal modifications all the time. It seems like the NRA is so caught up in this slippery slope that if we do anything to make guns safer, if we do anything to try to do background checks, if we try to eliminate any kind of bump stocks or anything, they, they're worried that, people, that they're gonna lose their guns. We're not trying to take guns away from people. That's the Second Amendment, their right to bear arms. I get that. But they don't need to have, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with having background checks and having, um, and having laws against things like bump stocks. Sure. So I guess what some of them would say is, you know, there's certain states, for example, New Jersey, Hawaii, California, New York, where they've implemented these very uh, strict gun laws and a lot of people are actually prevented from, you know, acquiring them or they've had to give up certain weapons. They've, you know, they've had uh, maybe like uh, these, these magazines that hold more than seven or ten rounds and they've had to have like turn those in or destroy them. Uh, so do you think they have any like legitimacy behind their slippery slope argument? I, no. <laughs> I don't understand why human lives are not the most important thing. 
I don't know that. So in Australia, they, they basically, they had a big massacre, you know, it was called the Port Arthur Massacre, and a bunch of people died, and a guy used a semi-automatic rifle, and then they just said, okay, no more semi-automatics, and they created a buyback program where everyone had to turn in their guns, and yeah, that's what they did. Do you think that's something we could do in the United States? I don't think so. I think the NRA is too powerful for that. But is that something you would want to do, like, see that happen? I personally would. What are we trying to achieve exactly out of this? Better laws to control guns so that fewer people die to gun violence. Sure, but we, we have to pass specific legislation in order to achieve that. What kind of specific legislation are, uh, are you guys advocating for today? I mean, it could be anything from the repeal of the Second Amendment, <laughs> really, seriously, to uh, outlawing... Um, Semi-automatic weapons. The Second Amendment repeals probably, I mean, it's hard to amend the Constitution, period. So, I mean, like, specific I'm legislation. Saying, yeah. uh, specific legislation, uh, we shouldn't have semi-automatic weapons. Let's just outlaw them. But also, anyone who has more than, let's say, five guns should be registered, and we should be aware of how many guns they have. Do you, th do you think someone with more than five guns is, like, more dangerous than someone with two, for example? I don't know. I really don't know. Because it would be hard to shoot with more than two at a time, right? Uh, yeah, but it's not that hard according to the guy in Las Vegas. Well, he, didn't, he didn't shoot 23 at a time. He had 23, but he was shooting them one at a time and all that. One at a time, but he ha came across as being a multiple shooter. Semi-automatic means one round per pull of the trigger. It's like the standard like handgun and everything. No, so, no, not quite. It is, yeah. I mean, well, okay, I'll accept that, but I, I don't totally agree with that. So then, uh, do you own a semi-automatic weapon? Yes. See, I just don't see why you need that. Well, I mean, it's a standard like for self-defense. For that's what cops carry in their belt on I the don't on the side. Cops carrying that? They've been trained, and and I want cops to carry. So civilians were trained. You would support that? Uh, not necessarily. So then, what would be the you, the standard? Like, what do you think is self-defense? Do you care? Are are you carrying your no, semi-automatic? It's California. We can't really carry over okay, here, so especially in Contra Costa. If came up to you with a gun right now, you'd die. So what is what good is your semi-automatic doing? Well, I guess people would say, well, that's why we should have, have a right to carry because then we could actually respond to that threat and not die. Okay, how would you have responded to the threat in, in Las Vegas with your semi-automatic if you were allowed to carry it? Which in Las Vegas you are allowed. Well, I'm not saying that that would help at all. Okay, great. I'm just asking how can we prevent like a situation like that, for example, from happening know if in the you future. Can never prevent it. Not in this country. Diane Feinstein said the same thing. She said she doesn't think we could have prevented as the Las as Vegas the shooting. The amendment is in place. You cannot prevent it. Why are we out here today? I've been against guns and violence since probably I was a young child. My parents went through World War II in Europe and I saw the devastation that it wreaked on their lives forever. So after. guns through the, the military and like carrying that out through people? It's just the violence. Uh, the only thing guns do is kill people. You were talking about like World War II and the, the violence it's caused. That's like more government policy, military police. Do you feel like we should disarm those organizations? No. We can't in this country. Is it something you would like to see though? Ideally, I'd like to see a system like in Europe where you're using, bill in England, where you're using billy clubs. And for the police, yeah. For the police. But what about the military also? We have a military presence. I mean, that is the one reason we don't need amend, uh, our amendment number two anymore, because it was initially put into place because we did not have a standing militia. I mean, I guess what they would say is uh, the founding fathers were against standing armies and they viewed them as a threat to, uh, to democracy and freedom. So that if you had um, an armed populace, that was the whole purpose in case there were enemies foreign to domestic to defend them from. You're right at that, but I won't even go that far. I am so against guns. I've never had one. Somebody once said you could shoot one. I shot three bullets and said, that's enough. Have I proved to you that I could shoot a gun? That's it. I'm out of here. Uh, I just can't do any, you know, I cannot see a world with guns. What, what could we have done to stop the Las Vegas shooter? There, there has to be some kind of control on guns and who has access to guns. Sure, but what specifically, like le legislation? Le obviously legislation. And, but what kind of legislation specifically? Limiting the number of guns that you can have. Every state should have a registry. There should be a national database so that we can find out if somebody's purchased 52 guns in the last two years. Um, and these, these magazines that shoot rapid fire. Well, the well, magazines don't shoot, they just they, they hold, it's like they a capacity. Hold. Whatever that yeah. thing is that, that shoots on, 
on, on the crowd. What, what policy proposal do you think would have like, well, prevented like it? Well, like I said, we need to have a national database. And, and why, why does somebody need more than one, two guns? Why does somebody need a machine gun? An he, didn't ha he didn't have an a machine assault, gun. An assault type weapon. Why? Ban those. Stop those. What, what would you define as an assault type weapon exactly? Oh, anything that's rapid fire. What's like? How would you define? I don't the know. Rapid? I don't know anything about guns. All I know is that my son was standing in a crowd, and bullets were hailing down on him. I don't know what kind of weapon he had. All I know is he had a ton of weapons. He had a, he had a semi-automatic, which means for every uh, trigger pull, it's one round. So that's about 85 percent of the guns in the in the entire country. They're, they're all well, the same type of technology. Well, we need to get those guns registered somehow. I'm not a politician. Do you think if his guns were registered that this would have been prevented? Well, I think if you limit the amount of guns that somebody can have, then yes, it would have been. Do you think if he had less than 23 guns, this would have been less deadly? Because he was only using one gun at a time to achieve this. He could have probably used the same one or two guns over and over again. You know, the next guy is going to say, wow, well, let's uh, knock out five windows in a hotel and set up, you know, five guns and let's connect them all and let's shoot them all at once. I mean, so be like five people or something? Or? No, I mean, they'll figure out a way. This guy was wired to the gills, you know, with, with wires and cameras. They'll figure out a way to connect all these guns. So they'll be, you know, they'll be the next guy, you know, that's the martyr that shot the most people. Okay. I mean, they'll find a way. So it's got to stop. There's no reason to sell these guns, period. Done. Look at all the other countries in the world and look at us. Like which country specifically are you talking about? All the other countries have the, the like the United the Kingdom highest. or something. Yeah, we're the highest because well, I mean, we allow people to have guns. So, for example, in the United Kingdom, because a lot of people they like to compare countries to countries. So, like the United States, the United Kingdom, or the United States to Japan or Australia. Yeah. Uh, it, it seems like it's more pertinent to control compare the country to the country. So, you know, obviously, UK didn't have gun laws, and then it had gun laws. For example, before they passed the gun laws, they actually had less of a, a murder rate than they did post the gun laws. Why do you think that occurred? I don't know. I don't know their laws over there. I don't really follow that. I just know what's here. I know how it affected my son. And it's something's got to get done. These get weird with <laughs> minors. All right. So these are, these are you want to get them in the shot. These are these are your kids do they have these consent? These are my kids to talk? and they have consent to talk and they're adorable. Fantastic. Thank you. In that state, it's literally the least like the gun laws are the least strict in the country. You can have infinite you can have as much ammo as you want, as many guns as you want when it's mo when in most States, there's a limited amount of ammo you can have at a certain period of time. Which states are those, for example? Uh, California. No, that's not true. You can buy as much ammunition as you want in California. I didn't know that. But there should be a limit on ammunition. On ammunition. I there think should be should, a NRA limit. NRA should do more. So what, what kind of limit should we put on ammo? In Texas, you can walk into a, like a store with a gun strapped. What was it called? James Bond? And, uh... This person, like, went to this fancy casino and was, like, strapped with, like, a gun here, a knife here. That's the movies, right? <laughs> but, like, people are probably strapped at, like, casinos. They're, yeah, they are. The a, lot, a lot of them, yeah. 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 The guy was again? Like, if you win some money, you'll be, like, scared because somebody could be, like, in there who's strapped in. Do you think that happens, though? Like, a lot of people who are legally armed, they, they rob people at casinos? Probably. It doesn't happen. No. Oh, no. No. Watching Casino Royale. <laughs> There's probably too much James Bond, right? Yeah. <laughs> if there were better universal background checks, and if there was a law that prevented somebody like that, and or at least looked at somebody like that, buying legally guns, so many of them in such a short period of time, if that had happened, and if we had good universal background checks, Somebody may may have it may have sent up a red flag. But he did buy them with background checks. The background checks are different all over the country. Nevada has he went through the federal one. Stores at at three or four different locations in a couple of different states over the over the time period. Each time you do that, it still sends to the FBI a, no, a ping. It does not necessarily. It does do that. if you're buying at a we store. Don't have federal universal background. You do at gun stores, yes, at FFLs because it, that's only for between private sales. So like a private citizen to another private citizen, it's not regulated at the federal level. But gun stores, there they are, they all go through background checks. Also, there are also there, there is the universal background checks 
are not working the way they're supposed to be working. But he didn't buy private sales, that because that, that's what the Universal Backer Track's like looking to, to you know, get private sales into it and like gun show private sales. But he bought them at gun stores. Let me just tell you one thing: there are gun stores right now that will sell you a gun, and all they do is they look at your driver's license. And uh, you still have to fill out the 4473 form. You might have to do that, but there are gun stores that will sell you licenses. So they're breaking the law? There are gun stores that are breaking the law. But is that what happened in this case? And they're doing a very bad job at doing background checks. Now, let me just say this, too. I'm not going to get into this. I'm telling you that there were things that would stop him from killing so many people. Sure, I'm trying to figure out like the what, what those are. would have stopped. Would, would, this is something that turns an, 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 a, a semi-automatic weapon, which should be outlawed, by the way. That's 85% of the weapons in the country. Should be outlawed. My opinion. Semi-automatic weapon turned into an automatic weapon by this device. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, so see, that, no, I, I'm done. No, can I explain to you what, what a bump no, stock does? I'm I know what a bump stock does. I have a son that goes to um, a school that allows concealed carry on campuses. Do I agree with that? No, because kids in college are leaving home for the first time. They have pressure for school for the first time. They have uh, peer pressure as well. But for all of those reasons, it just doesn't make sense. I think even for my son who says, oh, I don't have a problem with it, but if you think about how easy it is for kids to go off the rail. To you mentioned your son who goes to the, does he still go to university in Utah? Yes. And so they've had, uh, I believe they've had concealed carry on campus for something like over 20 years, for example, right? Uh, do you know how many like instances there have been with concealed carry permit holders who have like killed no, someone or I caused injury? I don't, but you're talking about a school who, it's kind of funny, they have the most diverse school, but they're still 70% white. So it's a very different environment. Well, what does that, what does that mean? Not, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a, a it's not symbolic of, of the United States as far as the melting pot and dealing with all of the cultures right what are you I, like implying exactly um, like if it's more racially diverse there's more crime and violence no I'm not saying that I'm saying that there's probably more uh, uh, more uh, discourse and not understanding I think you know we as parents it's our job to create uh, to teach uh, uh, tolerance in, in our society and acceptance of anybody Right? I don't think it's, it's, you know, we have a right to believe and not believe in our country, to believe in God and not believe in God. I, mean, I still don't understand the, the demographic question that you brought up for the Utah, like because they're more white, there's less of a chance for gun violence or something like that? You know, there's equal chances as, as for kids to have problems. So I don't, you know, I, I can't speak to Utah. I don't know that much about it. My son chose that school um, uh, and is studying computer science there. But I still hold true that kids there shouldn't have guns either because there's the same amount of pressures for... Uh, Nothing's happened in over 20 years over there. I don't there. know. I don't know the facts for Utah. So I can't, I can't comment on that. I know, but it's been zero over there. You know that for a fact? Yes. University of Utah? Yes. Wow. Okay. I'll look that up too. And I'll ask. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All social media links are in the description. Support me on Patreon. And thanks for tuning in for another episode of Nuance, bro.